or off. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, I guess, depending how you're picking up this podcast. It's Kent Beam with Nine Business Group. I'd like to welcome Andrew Richard uh, with Automated Rig Technologies. Andrew, welcome. Uh, please introduce yourself, your company, uh, what sets you apart, what makes you different? Yeah, thanks a lot for having me on the on the podcast here. Really appreciate the time and, and reaching out to us. Um, so I'm the president of Automated Rig Technologies and, and our group, Automated Rig has been around uh, for 12 years and we're made up of a group of designers and engineers and technicians uh, that are basically in four different buckets, right? We've got electrical, software, hydraulic and mechanical engineering. And all that's underpinned by over 200 years of in-house oil field experience. So that field experience allows our team in general uh, to generate practical and innovative solutions for land-based drilling and well servicing niches. And we're just most recently have developed uh, a new hardware platform for well completions. So that's the niche that we're going down uh, now. And, and we've been basically, we've been at the well completions innovation uh, solution for, for the market for the last six years. Um, and so now we're just getting into commercialization. So Excellent. How yeah. is, you know, oil, drilling for oil is now, quote unquote, an old industry, been around for a lot of years, especially even in Alberta, we think back to, uh, you know, 40, 50 years ago, not a question I threw at you, but I was dying to ask, so my apologies for making up on the fly is, how much has it changed even in the last 10 years as technology has changed? Um, it definitely feels like there's less gear going up and down the highway than maybe when I was a sales rep with Imperial Oil. Has it changed? And if so, how and how are you guys, how is the industry adapting to it? No, that's a really good question. And we've spent a lot of time thinking about that over the last several years. Um, and, and, and you can take it back even further than the last 10 years. If you go, if you think 40, 50 years ago, and you look at a drilling rig, we'll, we'll kind of break down some of the niches, but like when you, when you look at a drilling rig, patently the number of people on the rigs hasn't changed. You still have your driller, assistant driller, you know, rack and board, or your, your Derek Min, mud, mud guy, motor, you know, all that sort of stuff. Those numbers of guys really haven't changed. But what's interesting in the last several years is that we've, what, ordered at least half, probably closer to quarter the number of drilling rigs out there. So the same number of people on the, on the rigs, but an incredible amount of, let's call it consolidation. And that's primarily due to the technology that is, that is, that has been deployed on rigs. Things like, you know, going back the top drive back in the eighties and the nineties, wasn't the, wasn't on every single rig. Now I don't know. There's very few. If you spend any time on TikTok looking at drilling rigs and stuff like that, very few Kelly rigs. Almost everything has a top drive on it now. Um, and then you know rotary steerables and software and like we're talking about rigs that used to drill wells primarily vertical, right? Like and uh, everything was vertical and they're drilling wells in 40, 50, 60 days, sometimes longer, depending on, on, on where you're at. Like, I mean, some of those big rigs, Harold Miller, our VP of engineering talks about, you know, you'd want to get on at the beginning of the winter so that you had a job all winter drilling a well. Now we're, now the guys, uh, you know, you can list them off, Enzyme, Precision, the guys up in the Duvernay and the Montney, they're drilling um, effectively like 25,000 to, and then if you look at the Utica, Marcellus Utica, they're drilling 28,000, 31,000 foot wells, they're drilling them in like two weeks, right? Wow. So it's, and, and, and the, just the, sh the, so, so you're, so what you're doing is you've quartered the number of rigs and don't quote me on all the stats, but it's like, you've essentially like quartered the number of rigs, you've doubled the depth and you're, and you're drilling in, in, in a fraction of the time. Right. So, so that's the big change in the drilling side, which is why you're not seeing as many rigs running down the, uh, the, there. The, the, the difference on the well servicing side is that well servicing companies have been, um, there hasn't been a lot of automation and solutions in that side. So there's a, those guys are really, they're, they're debt burdened heavily. Their balance sheets are just this antiquated equip. They've got a lot of antiquated equipment. And um, there hasn't been the consolidation 
on that side of the industry. That 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 technology, a work over service rig, coil tubing, you know, those sorts of things haven't they haven't really changed in the last 40, 50 years, right? So there's a big space for disruption right now in that well completion space, which is the technology that we've got. Um, it really it it replaces coil tubing, replaces um uh heavy work over and and traditional snubbing jacks so that's that's where that's the target market for us there interesting so uh not that i could summarize that but i'll try well done <laughs> really it's just the the gear is more efficient you can one one rig can can produce what 10 could produce before because it simply takes less time to to start and produce a uh oil well Exactly. Exactly. It's not cheaper equipment necessarily at all, but, uh, but, it, but it's, you know, the, the, the high spec triples in the market right now, those are the rigs that are working, okay. you know? And, and so, so that's, and that's the stuff with, it's got full auto driller, you know, software based auto drillers, slipstick mitigation, soft torque, soft torque uh, algorithms. Like it's got all the things that make it what it is right so in, in reality um a lot of the same cool tech that i find in the fancy cars with it is almost in a way applied to a drilling rig we started very mechanical 40 50 60 years ago but now with the invention of software safer faster more efficient and and just probably even cleaner yeah absolutely yeah. Yeah. cool uh so you've been at this a few years what is the biggest challenge you've overcome since starting in business how did you tack it tackle it how did you resolve it and what was the outcome Oh, biggest challenges. Well, we've since 2010, you know, it's like we were talking a few weeks ago and, you know, about, about the cyclicality of the market, but even more like what overshadows that uh, I would say is the, the, the 2015 crash. And then obviously COVID those are, those are the two single biggest challenges that we've 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 had to undertake uh since we started in 2010 um you know it was about preserving cash and making decisions and executing so and 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 not you know from a business sense not a personal sense like mm -hmm. so 2015 uh leading up to 2015 we had 63 employees and um, in the fall of 2014, uh, one night, we had a cancellation. We had two cancellations from two different clients uh, and totaling six to six and a half million dollars worth of sales just evaporate overnight. And it was because of the de quick decisions that we made in that moment, um, which we, we basically changed, we shifted the company from 63 employees to 13 overnight. Mm -hmm. And it was probably the worst week of my life, you know? Um, but at the time there's, you don't have a lot of choice. So uh, we, we, we decided we had three options. You know, we, we figured at that point we could, we could turtle and wait it out, just sort of put the company into hold mode and just see what was going to happen. Um, we could fold or we could go out and get aggressive. And, and we chose to get aggressive. Um, so with some of the cash that we had preserved, um, we, we ended up purchasing a company called C-Tech Design and Manufacturing in Edmonton. And so, uh, just a little bit of background pre 2015, we, we, we had a business model where we had five clients and we just serviced the hell out of those clients. It was the sort of 80, 20 rule, you know, like where you, you're, you're making 80% of your revenue from 20% of your clients. So we really just focused on those 20%. We had a few other clients, but really we had major projects with those five. And, and that's what led to us failing, basically, let's call it in the fall of 2014, because we weren't, ex we weren't, we weren't exposed enough to, to, to enough clientele. Um, you know, hindsight 2020, but it, it really worked well for us. But we were a solutions provider up until that point, pure solutions. So zero competition. You know, a client would call us up and they would say, hey, we have a problem with XYZ. We would quote them an hourly rate and some, some estimated hmm. fabrication. And that was it. Like we, we just didn't do a lot of, uh, ha didn't have a lot of competition. Once 2015 hit, then we went out and we bought this company, C-Tech, Design and Manufacturing. They built coiled rod or continuous rod running equipment. 
Uh, so the pump jacks that go up and down and, and, and that sort of stuff. And so that changed our target client um, for, for portion of the business. Let's call it like a sub business unit. Right. And so, so that, that shifted us and then that allowed us to grow again. So we were back up to 20 by the end of 20 or 2020, 20, somewhere between 20 and 25 by the end of 20, uh, 16 or 15, yeah, 15, maybe. Um, and then 2020, obviously, uh, that was the exact same thing. Uh, you know, the preserving cash, uh, making decisions and executing. And again, you know, one of the things we had to make decisions on was laying people off through COVID. We just couldn't support having the overhead. Uh, unfortunately, the good thing about it, uh, I suppose, from a business standpoint, is that pretty much everybody outside of one or two people that we laid off prior to COVID or during COVID uh, has come back. So we're back cool. on the growth path and they've come back. Okay. So that, that speaks volumes for the culture and the, and the, and the yep. team that we have. Um, so that's, that's basically how we've, uh, got through the last no, no, it's great. No, it's, challenges. It's, no, that's wonderful. I, I mean, good for you for, for doing it, navigating it, uh, and learning. I think more importantly is you took something from seven, eight years ago and you applied it today, which I mean, a number of people who just sort of end this, uh, cycle of nothingness and, and nothing ever changes. You took it on the chin in 15, but you took those best practices and what you learned and applied it to 2020. What is one thing you know now that you wish you would have known when you started your first business? My first business. Or your, or when you started this or one. Or even this was, one. Oh, yeah, this, what is the one thing one. you know now that you would kind of tell your past self? That, that it's up to the individual to cause things to happen. So it's up to me to cause things to happen, mm -hmm. right? Um in the past, in the project management and the electrical design and all the other stuff that I've done in software development over the years, um, as a, as a, I don't want to say a cog in the wheel, but as part of a company with, with other people's KPIs being sales or ideation or something like that, you're sort of, you're, you're isolated from it. And as you grow up through, as I've grown up through this business, particularly, I've been on the forefront of had to be on the forefront of, of those things. And, and so that's, that's the biggest thing is, is, um, is that, I guess that learning piece of causing things to happen. Great. Um, I love this question. Not my favorite, but I do love it. What is your definition of a successful business? Yeah. So our companies, our company has a very clear goal that we've had since, uh, since the beginning. And we had this at our last company because um, our group's been together for several years and this is the third business iteration together. Um, our company has always had a goal to acquire and retain clients. Um, and, and so our and our our internal team is so driven to solve ch clients' challenges um, that you know, and, and I'll get to the full success metric here in a second. But but um, but that 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 sort of feeds the flywheel for our business. It's easy to go. Out, it's not easy to sell something, but it's easy to go out and make one sale. But if you don't deliver and execute on that sale and you don't impress the client and you don't become part of their team, then you're, then you're not feeding your business flywheel, right? Like you want, and that's one of the things that I absolutely love about our team is that I can, cause I've been in the sales thing for a long time. Our whole team sells, but I'm, I'm sort of, that's one of my KPIs is that top line revenue. And, and so I love the fact that as soon as a project becomes moves to the internal ops guys, they feed the flywheel. It's just as soon as you work with our internal guys, you're a client for life. So I don't. So that's that's an awesome awesome thing to 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 have. Um, successful business, you know. Obviously, there there's there's some things in there like, you know, your your. Your net positive at the end of the year, every year, um, 
it's it it comes down to a lot of that but at the but but at the same time if your client isn't doing well so if you're selling something for a million bucks and they're losing money on it you can sell one or two of them but if you if you're able to sell that thing and and they can make money and, and they can keep making money at it um that that's that's the win win for us so our 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 definition of success is that is that we we continue to grow our team with positive EBITDA every year, year over year. So, so in summary, your definition of successful business for your company is uh, profitability and, and building and designing products and servicing them to clients who can use them to make money so that it helps them be more profitable and stay in business. That's right. Yeah. Beautiful. Exactly. Well, well done. Uh, last question. This is my favorite. What do you want to be known for? Well, uh, back to the th same thing we talked about at the very beginning. Um, we are evolving well completions right now as we speak. So this new product, uh, I, we, I, I just sort of throw it out there that it's called, you know, the well completion space. But it, what it is, is it's called a jointed pipe injector. Uh, it's an injector that actually walks over couplings on, mm -hmm. on jointed pipe. I actually have a 3D print of, of what, the, what the block looks like. So that holds the the body of a pipe you'd have mm -hmm. one on either side and then uh when we walk over the couplings it opens up so it's a very boring mechanical innovation took a long time to get there um but that's the best part about mechanical innovation once you got it it's repeatable right so so that little linchpin technology sitting right there that i showed you is essentially um, that enables a whole new hardware platform for well completions, like hmm. something that hasn't even been seen out in the market. Well completions yep. is done currently very manual in the U S manually, uh, with heavy work over rig assist and standalone snubbing jacks, some coil tubing, but that's becoming more difficult. So we want to be known as the innovators, uh, of, of well completions technologies right across the board. That is fantastic. Uh, a bit a bit of a dreamer and at the same time, a bit of a disruptor, my favorite combination. So keep up the great work. Um, before we sign off, last plug for yourself and your company, where can people find you if uh, they want to learn more how to use your technology to their favor? Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate the, the, the shout out for that. Um, our, our website is www.automatedrig.com. I don't know why I always do the www because everyone in the world knows <laughs> www, but it's automatedrig.com. And, um, and then reach out on LinkedIn. I'm, uh, you know, search Andrew Richard or Richard or however you put it in there. It doesn't, doesn't matter, but I, I'm out there. And we're also on LinkedIn as well. Like, so if you look up automated rig uh, technologies, we're, we're there as well. And fantastic. Thank you for sharing 20 minutes of your time with us been an absolutely great guest and thank you for uh, letting us know, I guess, the industry patterns and trends of, of drilling rigs because as we get into this weird world of technology and everybody wanted to get in software and tech, um, we do forget about sometimes the bread and butter of what has made business uh, in Western Canada a healthy economy. So keep up the good work and have a great week. Awesome. You too, sir.